Good morning and welcome to the February 23rd, 2022 City Council meeting. We will begin with the invocation from Councilman Haney, followed by the pledge. Please take it. Please bow with me. Dear Lord, thank you for your blessings that you bestowed upon us. Grant us the wisdom to govern as you see fit. Grant us the wisdom to act justly and grant us the confidence to carry out your will. God, we pray over this council and this staff and that our actions glorify you. We pray that your wisdom and guidance instruct these proceedings. We are humbled to have a voice for the citizens of our great city, while knowing that it is not our own doing and not without your allowance. We are blessed with the ability for all seven of us to work together for the common good of Tyler, Texas. Lord, all honor and glory is yours. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll start off with the uh, minutes. Uh, from January the 12th, 2022, and February the 9th, 2022. Move to approve both as presented. Second. Got a motion by Westbrook, second by uh, McGee. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are going to come down and recognize some employees. <laughs> Venus. Now we have uh, Kenneth Clintard, uh, fire driver, engineer, 20 years of service. By the way, Ascension uh, is a career leader for 20 years of service. So anyway, Kenneth Clintard, fire driver, 20 years of service, are you here? Kenneth, no. Okay. All right, how about Lance Marshall, fire captain, 20 years of service. but not least, Daryl Gardner, police officer, 25 years of service. Thank you guys for, for what you've done for the city, your long-term loyalty. Uh, that's something we don't see in this day and time too much. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you teach the young employees just about loyalty and, and mentorship and, and what you do. So we do appreciate you and hope you stick around another 20, 25 years. <laughs> thank you.
All right, Kyle, zoning, Z1. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. This, uh, we have two, two items today. Uh, the first item is a zone change from RMF, multifamily residential district, to R1B, single family residential. Uh, this is uh, located at 708 West, or 708 Wilson Street. Uh, this is in City Council District Number Two. Uh, the applicant is requesting the zone change uh, to develop a single-family home on the property. This request is consistent with the future land use guide to identify the single-family and single-family attached. All the uh, surrounding properties are generally developed with detached single-family homes, and that's what the applicant plans to uh, develop as well. And the uh, the request would also. Uh, help implement the, uh, the, the goal of adding more residential rooftops to the north end. Of the notices that were sent out, zero were returned in favor or in opposition to the request. And the plan the commission by a 6 0 vote recommended approval. Any questions for Kyle? Second. Motion by McGee, second by McKellar. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Z2. This next request is a zone change from C1 Light Commercial District to PUR Plan, PUR plan Unit Residential District. Uh, this is also in Council, Council District Number 2. And the applicant is requesting the, the zone change to develop uh, 88 single family homes on, the, on this, uh, the pro this property here. There's a site plan associated with this request. Uh, the adjacent properties to the uh, northeast and south are currently undeveloped. Uh, the property to the west is currently located in the uh, outside the city limits in uh, zone two of the Tyler ETJ and is currently undeveloped. Uh, this request uh, would, would amend the future land use guide from mixed use center to single family, medium, low density. The applicant is again proposing 88 uh, detached single family homes at a density of uh, 4.9 units per acre. Uh, the proposed setbacks are 25 feet in the front, 15 feet rear yard setback. Uh, five feet on the sides and then 10 feet on the, the corner uh, side yards all other requirements or stipulate or other standards would be subject to uh, R1B R1B standards and the, the unified development code um, of the notices that were sent out zero will return in favor or in opposition to this request and the plan the commission by a 6 0 vote recommended approval we do have a, qu a card here from Sam as you guys want to ask Sam any questions where is Sam? Oh, so oh. oh out of view. <laughs> Y'all want to peg him with any questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions for Kyle? He sure did. <laughs> Second. Did I do something wrong? No, I said Sam got off the okay. He did. Uh, who made the motion? You? Who made the second? Motion by McGee, second by McKellar. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Kyle. R1, Chief. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Um, this morning, we uh, R1 is is a request that the City Council consider adoption of a resolution authorizing submission of an application by the Tyler Fire Department for and acceptance of grant funding through the Office of the Texas Governor's Homeland Security Grant Division and for grant funding through the State Homeland Security Program as managed by the East Texas Council of Government to be used to support programs and projects aimed at maintaining and or enhancing the city of Tyler's emergency preparedness and response capabilities. With all that said, uh, we're applying this year for uh, a mini robot. Uh, the full size robots, they cost some, somewhere around $400,000. And, uh, but a lot of the EOD teams, the bomb disposal teams were using these mini robots. Uh, they're a lot smaller, more agile and they're only about $50,000. So uh, this will allow us to apply for that and give us further capabilities. We have a borrowed full-size robot that we have borrowed from another entity, but uh, this will give us a brand new uh, mini robot that we use most, most often it easily to uh, transport to and from incidents uh, than, than the trailer uh, full-size ro robot. So uh, with that, are there any questions? Any questions for Chief? Move to approve bar one. Second. second. Uh, motion by Westbrook, second by Haney. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carries. And I should have said this is a no match grant, so no matching funds. So we like that. Thank you. Thank you. R2. Uh, this next item is a request that the city council consider adoption of a resolution or resolutions of support uh, for various affordable tax credit housing projects and the approval of a waiver of development permit fees in the amount of $500 for each awarded project. Uh, this uh, just a little bit of history here. So this is for the, uh, the Texas Department of Housing and Commun Community Affairs or TDHCA. Uh, their, their housing tax credit program uh, is one of the primary means of directing private capital towards the development of affordable rental housing for low-income uh, households. Tax credits are awarded by the state uh, uh, to be eligible to offset a portion of their federal tax liability in exchange for the production of affordable housing. The allocation of tax credits is a very competitive, competitive process. Uh, each uh, project receives points for uh, various different items, as, and one of those is a uh, some points for a resolution of support from the uh, from the local government, which would be the city of Tyler for these these projects. Uh, four entities are requesting a resolution of support for their individual applications uh, for, from the city of Tyler that would significantly improve their opportunity to obtain these funds from the uh, from the state. Uh, all proposed developments are targeting either the elderly population or workforce housing needs uh, in Tyler. Uh, providing a resolution of, in support for affordable housing projects is consistent with the, the Tyler First Comprehensive Plan goal of uh, providing sufficient housing for households at all income levels and at all stages of the life cycle. Uh, I'm going to go through some of these, these projects really quick, uh, the proposed uh, applications here. Um, I just wanted to note that while some of these, uh, three of the four uh, would, would require a zone change uh, to develop the property. And so uh, as we, as any, any approval of a resolution would not uh, negate the need to go through the zone change process later on and uh, it would not uh, signify or, or, or uh, pre preclude any, any review of that process. So. Uh, approval of the resolution does not necessarily what does not mean approval of the zone change request. So, uh, first uh, first application here is the reserve at Grande. Uh, this is located at the south of the intersection of New Copeland Road and East Grande Boulevard, and uh, this is in Council District Number Six. It's currently zoned agricultural, uh, and the proposal is for 84 unit, uh, uh, 55 plus community at this development. You can see here it's at the south end of this property. <coughs> the, uh, the next item is, uh, our next project is Cherry Hill Apartments. This is in district number one. Uh, so currently zone PMF, it would require a site plan amendment and the proposal is for 60, 60 units at 12 units per acre. Uh, again, south of Cherry Hill and Cumberland Road. Uh, the next project is Ce Celebration Tyler in district number one, currently zone C1, uh, which would require zone change. And then it's uh, proposed for 100 units. This would be a senior, senior, level, or senior living, 55 plus community. And then finally, uh, Tyler Park Lofts is the, the final project that's uh, requesting a resolution. And it's uh, in council district number one. Uh, it's, it's currently zone RMF for multifamily and uh, would not require zone change. And the uh, proposal is for 68 uh, multifamily units. And so at this point, or at this time, uh, uh, it is recommended that the city council <coughs> consider resolutions of supports or resolution of support uh, for uh, any or all of these projects. Any question for Kyle? Yeah, I've, I've got a question. Oh, Colin, that first one, the, uh, at the end of New Copeland, I've seen two proposals f for that. 
One is the one that you've got up here, senior living, and I've seen one from that company that was just apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, it, when somebody submits this, are they are they locked into this type of proposal, or can they change it later? Uh, I believe it's, it's contingent. Uh, if they are receiving points for the, the the target population, then they are locked into it from the from the their funding. Uh, perspective, but the uh, as it pertains to zoning or anything like that, that that doesn't uh, for age restriction or anything like that is not enforced through through zoning. Yeah, no, that's my question. Yeah. you really don't. Kyle, can you <coughs> excuse me? Explain the difference between uh, <coughs> fifty-five and older and sixty-two and older for some of the facilities and the. Uh, what's allowed in <clears throat> 55 and older, you can have younger people also, but in 62 uh, and plus, uh, it's restricted. Can you explain the differences in that? Uh, if you know. No. no. <laughs> uh, sure. No, I'm not. It's <laughs> older than the other. <laughs> Maybe I should have asked. Sorry. <laughs> no. Um, and maybe somebody here could sure. could do that, but uh, usually the you know the exception to the the Fair Housing Act is you know if it's you know it can be 55 plus is one thing that you know is uh, is part of that, but 62 plus I'm not sure. Because okay. yeah, and those would be covenants that would be between right. the state, I suppose, with Texas Department of Community, Housing and Community Affairs um, on, on the property. We as a city never get involved in age restriction uh, relation or covenants or um, I guess other issues for facilities um, I know the council has before them just kind of for the clarification for action that you have is uh, you the council has the ability to uh, give recommendations for uh, one project and multiple projects all projects or no projects so really you have a kind of a wide berth there in regards to what you want to put forward uh, the next step then would be for uh, these projects, whichever one, if you do give one uh, any uh, support uh, through a resolution of support, then they will take that to the state. They will use that. Those become additional points as far as the part of the Texas Department of Hus Housing and Community Affairs point distribution system. Um, and so gives them an additional leg up, if you will, uh, for possible award of the tax credit projects here uh, with their development. All right, I've got two cards here. Uh, Russ Michaels, do you wish to come speak? If you'll just state your name and address for the record, please. Yeah, my name is Russ Michaels, um, and I'm from uh, Houston. I run a company down there as the executive director of uh, Interfaith, and I also consult in the industry, so I could probably answer some questions if you guys have any. Um, I don't want to take up too much time. I represent Tyler Park Lofts, uh, the developer and the owner on that particular development. Um, that, that, that site is actually really great because it's near apartments already and um, we're only taking down about five acres as you can see. And uh, we actually just one modification on that. It's not 68 units, it's actually been dropped to 60 units. We're targeting a family population, not seniors, so it's not age restricted. But the cool thing about that is we can actually target seniors and veterans and families and people of need. And so the market here in Tyler really calls for that. There's 30%, 50%, 60% area median income folks that could actually use a better place. And when you see some of these designs, as you've seen them in the past, you know, they're class A luxury style apartment complexes with all the finishes, all the amenities, and they actually are run really well if you're, a, if you're a company like us that literally stays with you for 40 or 50 years and runs them and owns them. Um, I wanted to mention something about the covenant that runs with the land. There is a LURA, a land use restriction agreement. I'm an attorney, so I can speak to a little bit of that, that we have to sign up for restrictions that last for 50 years almost, basically, to get the points. And so what you end up with is if you pick the target population for seniors, that's going to run with the land too, okay? On this one, there is no restriction for age, but it allows us to capture more folks that are actually in, an, in, in need of housing uh, in, in this particular demographic, in this particular city. Um, but that's really my presentation uh, to you today. I can answer any questions that you might have. I think that the, sometimes what I've seen in this industry is that the best way to go about sometimes when you have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of developers in the same census tract is maybe support all of them so that they can go to the next stage. TDHCA will kind of hash it out. They only allow one deal to go forward in, the, in one census tract every year, so you're probably only gonna get one development if you support all of them. 
you, I, I can almost say unequivocally that you will only get one. Um, but that's just something that I think you can, you can uh, use as, you know, just some backup if it hasn't been kind of set at this point. So, but that's it. I'm open to any questions. If you any have. questions for Rick Michaels? Thank you. Appreciate yeah, thank you being you. here. Appreciate the time. We also have a card here from Darren Smith, if you wish to speak. If you'll state your name and address for the record. Sure. Uh, Darren Smith, 8506 Cary Lane, Rella, Texas. Uh, I'm not an attorney. Did a great job. <laughs> but I have been in the business for about 30 years. And to answer your question, uh, Councilman Curtis, uh, once we declare what our demographic will be, we're locked in. So we're, we're a 55 plus community, not gonna be 84 units, gonna be more like 70 construction costs continue to rise. So there'll be uh, uh, less density on the property. Uh, and I have been in contact with Pastor Byers to the church next door and he'd love to have us as a neighbor. So I just wanted to clarify that we are locked in at that demographic when we submit our application. So it's not that if we can change it. Any questions for Mr. Smith? What city did you say you're from? Rowlett, Texas. Rowlett. Just yes. right outside of Dallas. I, I'm, stuck, I know I'm, Rowlett, yeah. I'm stuck here today. That's okay. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you. Those are the only two cards I have. Is there anybody else out there that did not fill out a card that wishes to speak on this item? C come on up. You'll state your name and address for the record. Thank you. It's Alan Nall, 522 Country Lane in Coppell, Texas, also outside of Dallas. So we have the celebration title project there. Uh, as someone asked the question, we uh, there are two permissible age restrictions. One is 55 and older, the other 62 and older. Uh, we're doing 62 and older. That restricts it, so everyone in the facility has to be over 62. We do a lot of nursing homes and assisted living projects, and what we know is seniors want to live with other seniors. Uh, most of our residents are women as they age, because women live longer, and they really want to be around seniors, so we think that's very important. Uh, if you have a 55 and older community, then kids can live there. You know, only one of the people has to be over 55, so it's a little bit of a little different story. Uh, and, and as the other folks said, there'll only be one facility granted. Uh, one of the things we really like about our site is right on the western side, we back up to the new walking trail, and we think that's just a, an amazing amenity for seniors. Uh, the other senior community, I, you know, we look very carefully at the road plan. Cumberland Road will be extended through there. Uh, I, I don't know how the new road's going to work on the other deal off of Grande and New Copeland, but I think that's something, you know, we looked at that site also and we're worried about the new road coming through there with seniors. So that's all I have. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Which one is your facility? It's called Celebration Tile. Celebration. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, we'll have some discussion now, but the, the first thing I'll say is, is oh, oh, come on up. There's one more. Name and address for the record. Sweet. Uh, I'm Jeff Beckler. I'm representing Zerman Properties and Cherry Hill Apartments. Uh, this will be 60 units off of uh, Cher uh, Cherry Hill and Cumberland. Uh, true multifamily, uh, no age restrictions. Uh, much like Mr. Michaels, you know, we're able to capture um, much more than than just your 55 and up, 62 and up. Um, it really bodes well for capturing more of the Tyler population. Uh, it's a great new area. We'll have great access off Cherry Hill. Um, sits up sits up really nice and again just the just the site plan amendment we won't need to to, to go through a rezone from a C1 or anything like that so um, I just wanted my voice to be heard you guys have heard um, all the other details I won't uh, be redundant but I just wanted to uh, see you again and uh, voice support for Cherry Hill thank you any questions thank you for being here you know 
it's kind of tough to do this because you got four applicants, you got four projects that, that really fit different needs and different parts of town. And, and uh, so first of all, thank you to all the people that, that have gone through this process and, and applied and, and all that. Uh, when we talk about a letter of a, a resolution of support, several years ago, we did a resolution of support and we did support all the people that applied. And I believe the year that we did that, that the, the project went to Longview. And so what we learned from that is, do we, what, do, is there a risk when you support them all? And, and I think there is a, a certain amount of risk. You know, if we come here today and, and we support one project, I think the chances of us getting it here in Tyler are better. I'm not an attorney, but I'm just talking from past experience with this. So, you know, I, I've had the opportunity of looking at, at all four projects, and I've met with several other folks, and they, they all meet, like I said, they all meet different needs, but there's one of them that, that I don't even want to look at y'all's facial expressions when I say this, but the, the one that, 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 I, that really meets a need that I see is the one, I don't remember what it's called, it's the one at Cumberland and Old Jacksonville. And- Celebration it, Tyler. Part what? Celebration Tyler. Celebration Tyler. Celebration. Celebration. And the reason I say that is, is we went down there Saturday and my wife and I, and we walked the Legacy Trails for the first time. And we walked down to that corner, and the number of people that are walking the trails, it, it's amazing. And you see in people's backyards where they've made little makeshift bridges to go from their backyards to the Legacy Trails. And then you think about this project of people that are 62 and older that'll have access to Legacy Trails. It, to, to me, it just seemed like a, a natural fit. You know, there's not houses all around. The, the density looked good. Uh, th that was just the direction that that I went. I'm, but I'm just one of, of seven. So I'll be more than happy to open it up to anybody that has their individual thoughts. I don't have an individual thought, but I have a motion if you'd like me to make a motion. Or if there's any other discussion, I'll hold off on that. Anybody else have any comments first? Okay, then I move to adopt a resolution of support for the affordable housing tax credit project identified as Celebration of Tyler off of Cumberland Road and the approval of the waiver of the development and permit fees in the amount of $500 for that project. Second. Got a motion which by Haney. Which board? Do I? For which project? Celebration of Tyler. Um, motion by Haney, second by Westbrook. Any further discussion? That's the 62 years and older. Correct. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Once again, thank you to all the applicants. We appreciate your interest in Tyler and, and maybe next year. Thank you. All right, M1, Ms. Kate. Good morning, Mayor, Council. Kate Deeds, Director of Utilities. I'm here today uh, to present um, an award for bid on a consent decree project, our capacity group one implementation sewer sites 7A2, 7B1, and 7B2. So um, as opposed to kind of what we've already been working on construction-wise, um, where we're doing remedial measures, um, point repairs, uh, stuff on existing lines, uh, repairs to existing lines, this is um, more of where we're looking at capacity, how much capacity we have in a certain line in a part of the city. So pipeline analysis uh, had to, and LNV had developed a hydraulic model um, of the collection system where they identified some potential capacity constraints. So after field, field, field verification, 
um, and of those identified potential capacity constraints, they did some data collection, and so then they went out, calibrated, refined the model, and determined the confirmed capacity constraints um, in the system. So then they developed a uh, capacity remedial measures implementation plan. And from that, um, well, here's the schedule for the work that we'll be doing in this capacity remedial measures plan. We've got three groups identified, um, mainly based on proximity, complex, um, complexity of the projects, and so on. Um, and in group one, which is the one we're awarding right now, we have four different groups or four different packages that will go out. And those are going to be bidding through Q3 of this year. So KSA has been doing the engineering on group one. Um, they had a design contract awarded to them in February of 21. So there are for four design packages, as I said, and they're also going to be running with the construction phase services on these projects as well. The estimated group one total uh, construction cost 7.6 million dollars. In this particular project for group one, um, like I said, there are specific sewer sites, 7A2, 7B1, 7B2. So this is the first of the four group one projects. We have one line, line A, about 1,600 linear feet of 12 inch gravity sewer line. Um, and then line B, which is about 4,200 linear feet of 12 inch gravity sewer main is gonna be installed. The improvements are including the manholes, um, connections to existing sewer lines, pavement repairs, and, and other things that go along with um, increasing the capacity of those lines. Um, sealed bids were opened on February 8th. Um, they were publicly opened and read aloud. We have five bidders. Um, the low bidder is uh, J2 Construction Services, LLC. They're out of Longview, Texas. So, I'm here to um, ask that uh, the city council authorize the city manager to execute a contract with J2 Construction Services, LLC, in the amount of $1,362,883 for the consent decree capacity work group one implementation sewer sites, 7A2, 7B1, and 7B2. Any questions for Kate? I do, Kate, I, I know that they, all of the uh, <coughs> bidders were vetted. Mm -hmm. So has J2 performed work for the city before? J2 has not performed work for the city before, but KSA is familiar with them. Um, and they've been not only vetted by the city, but also by, vetted by KSA, and it's been recommended that we go with them. Okay. All right, thank you. With that, I move to approve that one. Second. Motion by Westbrook, second by McGee. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. M2, Chief. Good morning again, Mayor and Council. Uh, M2 is a MOU that we're uh, asking to be signed. So the request is that the City Council consider approval for an interlocal agreement with the City of Lindale for the use of the Lindale uh, Fire Training Facility. Um, the background on this is our uh, fire training facility here in the city of Tyler is certified by the state as a, a, a fire training facility that can host in a, a fire academy, which we currently run a fire academy. Uh, Lindale is not considered a state certified fire academy facility. So it takes this MOU in order for us to be able to use their facility because our uh, Class A burn building at our uh, facility has been condemned. It was condemned in January. I am working through the city manager's office to come up with a stopgap. Uh, I'll be before you again after we go through a sealed bid process for a, uh, a portable unit that will be able to satisfy what we need. But in the, in the meantime, we need to use a different facility so that we'll have something in place. Uh, that stopgap is, is anywhere from 10 to 14 weeks from us making payment for it. So it'll be a little time out and our academy may need to use a uh, burn facility prior to that. So this agreement uh, is a no cost agreement. Lindell is allowing us to use it just by handshake. But we need to have it in place so that we can use it uh, so that our state certification as an academy will go over to their facility as well. 
So the request that the City Council consider approval of the interlocal agreement with the City of Lindale for the use of, of the Lindale Fire Training Facility is it's a request. Any questions? Any questions for Chief? Chief, you mentioned in there uh, <clears throat> about the Fire Academy, and I, I want to commend you and your department because I know that's uh, a new academy, something that we haven't had in uh, over 20 years. Uh, I don't know if the public really knows that, so I want to congratulate you on that. Thank you so much. Uh, the first academy went very well. Uh, we, we were way above the state average for the group, 100% graduation. So uh, we're looking forward to that in, in this class as well. Thank you. It's also a credit to the spirit of cooperation and, and working together that we have in East Texas. And so thank you for fostering that also too. Thank you, sir. With that being said, so moved. All right, so got a motion. <laughs> motion by McKellar, second by Wynn. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. M3. You're back. <laughs> okay, so this, uh, this next item is a uh, an am proposed amendments to the North End Residential Building Incentives Program. Uh, this is a uh, a program that was adopted back in 2013 uh, <clears throat> to help incentivize residential infill development in the, uh, the north end uh, planning area. And so the, uh, the goal again is to incentivize quality infill development uh, on previously undeveloped land. Uh, and so the uh, back in, so it's been updated a couple times over the years, uh, back in 2018 and then in 2020. Uh, trying to uh, <clears throat> capture more or, or kind of tailor the, the program to uh, uh, smaller geographic areas and to capture more of the, the infill uh, uh, type of, of housing that we're, we're seeing in Tyler. And so <clears throat> uh, just a little bit of the, the highlights here on the, on the program. Uh, uh, annually, there's, there's $5,000 uh, set, set aside for reimbursements for residential uh, permit fees uh, for qualifying projects and then there's also just over thirty thirty one thousand dollars in water or sewer tap fees uh, to be waived for those same projects uh, we kind of do the math on that that's about ten home ten homes every year uh, that could be eligible for that uh, depending on the size of the home but at the minimum uh, eligible home is uh, thirteen thirteen hundred square feet and so uh, with that number is about 10, 10 homes that are eligible. So uh, back in, uh, so last year, uh, the, there were enough projects to exhaust the, uh, the funding for those. And, and uh, so those were about 10 home homes uh, in, in, the, in the, the, the Texas College area. And then this past, uh, this past year, or current year as well, uh, there's been four projects that have been accepted into the program. I, I, I don't know the stage that they're at, but the, uh, it's about just, it's just under $2,000 that ha has been committed towards that. So we're about halfway uh, through our, our cap there. So, but the year is still, still young. So, um, <clears throat> and then also just kind of hi highlight the eligible or el eligibility for the program. So these are for infill residential uh, developments uh, limited to, uh, R1A, R1B, R1D, and R2 zoning. So uh, essentially single family detached uh, homes that are located in um, certain target areas, which I'll show, and then that they have to be at least 1,300 square feet to qualify. And, uh, <clears throat> and, al and also the development of the property can't have, or development or property can't have any uh, outstanding liens or, or violations. The uh, so we've got the two existing districts, uh, Texas College District and the uh, Butler College District. So these are the, the two areas that are targeted for uh, eligible projects. So uh, if there's a property in this area that qualifies or that qualifies uh, based off the size of the home, it can be uh, you know, consider, considered, considered for the program. I'm here today to talk about some of the uh, proposed amendments to the, the, the program here. Uh, one is to add the St. Louis community as a 
an eligible target area. Uh, so I essentially expand the, the geographic area that we, uh, the program serves. Uh, and then also designate all these areas as res residential improvement areas. Um, and then also to reserve at least 50% of the, the funding for nonprofit home builders in our community that, uh, so 50% of the funds can be eligible for uh, or reserved for, for those entities. Um, and then uh, also just clarify that uh, once approved into the, the program itself, uh, the, the permits have to be pulled after 90 days or within 90 days um, of, of approval. So uh, if, if a project, you know, so other projects could be available if, uh, if there's issues uh, yeah, with, uh, with pulling those permits. So, um, and so the, the St. Louis area here is uh, identified um, by the blue, uh, the blue boundary there. So essentially the southwest uh, portion of uh, the loop, or just inside the loop and, and 155 for Frankston Highway. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, with that being said, uh, staff, or is recommended by staff to adopt these amendments to the, the, the north end instead of the residential building instead of the program. So up till now, if, if a developer came in first in line, could he gobble up all the cre credits? Yes. Yeah. And so right now it's kind of a first come first serve uh, basis, and uh, without any of that that timeline or time frame uh, on when you have to uh, obtain those permits, you know, right now it's, yeah, it's a first come first serve. So um, this. Could, probably spread out some of the, the funding throughout the year. I assume you've probably had issues of people obtaining the permits, filing for this, and then nothing happens with, with one of the new, with one of the changes that you put in place? That's correct. Yeah. Kyle, are there specific areas of Texas College or any area in, in the Texas College District? Uh, any any area within the identified boundary of the, the Texas College District district, which is from the uh, Texas College plan, and uh, so it's that pink or that that purple color there. Uh, everything within there would be eligible. Okay. Has there been requests to add the St. Louis area? That's why I'm looking to right. expand it. Uh, there has, and there also uh, we have seen quite a bit of you know, activity or some home building in that area on the field lot. So I uh, want to encourage that as well. So we're talking about increasing probably 30% of uh, adding an additional area to our current approved That's area. Correct. And we're not increasing the funding at all to this. That's not being proposed, no. Are we going to run through it faster? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Historically, how many not-for-profit home builders apply for these? Well, we um, we did have we did have inquiries uh, a couple of years ago about that, and the, the funds were, I guess, dedicated already. Um, but uh, I don't really have a number on how many how many they have how many have been applied for. But uh, typically, you know, there's a few projects every year that uh, would probably would likely be eligible. And so if, if uh, we kind of set aside or reserve some, some of the, the program for, for those, we think that'd be a good idea. If 50% of the funds are set aside and uh, a, a non-profit home builder doesn't apply for that 50% of funds, whether it be one not-for-profit or multiple not-for-profit, and that 50% sits there, does it roll over to the next year? And then if it does roll over, does it get combined with the entire funding where then the 50% for people that are for profit then get a bigger chunk than what it was the year before? Uh, uh, at this time, there's no rollover in, in from year to year. Um, I guess if there's a, a desire to try to, you know, at some point um, uh, use the unutilized 50% uh, for that current that fiscal year, that's something that could be clarified or updated in this proposal. Yes, we'll find out what the demand is from the nonprofit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Does, does, does Habitat apply? 
Pardon me? Does Habitat apply for these? They, they've, they've asked about it, and when they, when they did, there was nothing left. Nothing left, left, left. Yeah, that year. So is this part of HR 970, the Opportunity Zone? It's no. not part of that? No. Okay. This is, this is a separate program put together by the city. It comes out of the development. I want to make sure that, because funding has been asked a couple of different times. This comes from the Development Services Fund, so that is what is paid for by um, the development and building uh, construction fees that uh, doesn't require any general fund to then go to it. So all of the development services that we provide are paid for from the Development Services Fund. And so that became the piece of trying to then limit what was the amount of exposure that we had financially on this, thus the, the certain amount that were then provided each year because for budgeting purposes of how do we make sure that we keep, as far as not requiring any general fund, uh, essentially property taxes uh, or sales taxes, to subsidize development services, but at the same time have funding that we can start to set aside to encourage development in this area. And so how do you come with that balance? So that's the reason council every year is you approve the budget. Uh, that is part of then the funding from development services that then is allocated as potential uh, to go into this program. So Kyle, in our strategic plan, anything on the north side goes towards our strategic plan building uh, the thousand homes or Whatever, 3, homes, 3, yeah, 3, homes 3,000 homes in, in the strategic plan. So this was, would not count against our strategic plan. I mean, is it, or meet the goals of the strategic plan, this, it, this, because it's the southwest side of Tyler, correct? Well, this, no. Yeah. No, go ahead, oh. Joe. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, I, I apologize. Uh, I don't have a map for the entire north end oh, planning okay. area. Uh, you can kind of see it in that, I guess, that orange color there. Right. That's... So this area is general, or this area is in the North End Plan. So it area. would be considered. In the yeah, North. definitely. Okay, so, me. Thank you. and so, yeah, it, it is intended to help implement that. Okay. That goal. For thank sure. you. Ed, to your your point, um, since it's a, a budget item, it's not like we have those funds sitting in a bucket, and if we don't use them, then they're applied to the same amount next year. We just and the budget show that they weren't used. Yeah, because you use essentially a zero-based budgeting almost kind of concept so that, yeah, each year you're starting fresh on these. Um, it's not as though, yeah, those were separate funds that were put aside right. and then are encumbered <coughs> for that use uh, from there on out. Okay. That answers the relevant question. <clears throat> Any other questions for Kyle? Nope. Sounds good. Second. All right, got a motion by McKellar, second by McKee. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Thank Kyle. Cassandra, are you going to read this for the Keep Tyler Beautiful Board? Are you, do you have the names of the people that have applied for that? Yes, sir. Or maybe I've got them. So we have uh, Jake Greenberg. Kristen Bryce, Patricia Bies, and Amber Phillips. Gotcha. And we just have one spot available on that uh, board that we need to appoint. All right, we got one, two, three, four people that want to be on this on this uh, board. And, and the thing that's interesting is that. This is a good board. It's, it's nice to have four people that want to be on it. The bad thing is only one person gets selected, and so we got to figure out who that person's going to be. I know that uh, Kristen, I know, had been uh, recommended by the, the Keep Tyler Beautiful Board, and, and, and primarily because of her attendance to meetings and, and uh, her volunteerism with with that board, so that's that was their recommendation. But I'll definitely entertain. Uh, yes, I, I'd like to uh, to offer a motion and or speak on uh, Ambry Phillips. Uh, probably some of you may have seen her feature in last week's uh, newspaper uh, for being one of the Black Heritage uh, persons and for all the work that her volunteerism and all the work that she's done. She's a very active young lady in the community. 
uh, I call her a rising star because even though she doesn't bring attention to herself, she is always out there in the community working hard. So I think that uh, sometimes if we have some of the younger people to bring different ideas uh, to our boards, it, uh, it will encourage and in increase their participation in bringing other younger people to the community. So I'd like to uh, nominate Amber Phillips. Any other thoughts? Um, I mean, I, I like what Shirley has to say, but I'm going to probably give sway to what the board itself is recommending. I also have a question on uh, the only application I have in front of me is Ms. Phillips, and it has her choice for the Keith Tyler Beautiful Board as number two. Were there any applicants that fit that as the first choice? That would be other three put the first choice. The other three applicants for first Mr. Mayor, I agree with uh, Dr. Cullard in that uh, I've been contacted by two of the individuals that are also younger that want to get involved in Tyler and, you know, I suggested to one try the board route, um, you know, move back to, the, move back to Tyler recently and, you know, how do you get involved? Look at boards, look at ones that maybe fit what you have a passion for. Uh, as a way to get involved. So uh, I agree that it is nice to uh, get younger folks involved and we want that so that they understand how our wonderful city works. But also, I had not had a chance to talk to Leanne and ask her what their board recommendation is. They know the folks that have been involved and active. So uh, I kind of you know, lean a little towards them and their thoughts. Well, and, and I think what, what has happened some in the past is, is that as we do these board selections, we've just individually have, th have thrown out a name because of our own personal experience. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have not gone through the, the vetting process or allowed the, the board to vet the person to let us know that, that this person is the is most qualified, not that maybe the best, but most qualified. So sometimes I think maybe we should do a better job of allowing the boards to vet the people because they know them. I know we need to vet them as well, but it's hard to, it's hard to, to I want to, I want to want everybody to, to have their person on there, but there's only room for one. Yeah. I, I think it's question. very important that, that, as you said, that we as council members, because we're out there in the community working around these people and I'm not saying that the board is not as well but uh, but I this young lady I see her I've seen her working from the time she was five years of age and so let me explain why her mother her grandmother is a very active person in the community Miss Jean Flowers and uh, she brought her out to pass out um, flyers and things even during the time that this young lady was five years of age out there putting out flyers pushing elections and just actual, actually being very involved from five years of up to where she is right now. So I really push her hard to be on this board. Thank you. Silence. <laughs> Silence it's is golden. golden. <laughs> it requires a vote. It does require a vote and What's a, a vote requires a motion. Who's the person that the board recommended? Crystal with a motion. Kristen Bryce is who the board had recommended. Kristen Bryce, I make a motion to approve Kristen Bryce. Got a motion? I need a second. Second. Got a motion by Curtis, second by Haney. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. So that would be six to one? I would assume, yes. Yes. Thanks, Shirley, for your input. You're welcome. My pleasure. All right. Is there a spot on the Neighborhood Revitalization Board? She indicated that as her first choice. I don't know what the status is on, on that board. We do not. Not at the okay. moment. Well, and, and just for kind of, I guess, to make sure for all the council, because like Ms. Phillips could come back for not only those two, but for other ones as well, you'll be seeking usually, is it in August? We uh, start taking appointments in June, or taking applications in June, and we'll appoint them in August, August or September. 
Oh, okay. So you'll be taking them in June yes, uh, again for different positions. So right. we can see Ms. Phillips again, uh, possibly for different over their openings, yes, including sir. Keep Tyler Beautiful, right. if such ones exist. Okay. I have a question on that too. I know we've probably waited too long, but are those meetings, those meetings are public, right? Anybody can attend? They are. Because I like that comment that you had mentioned that the board had said about Kristen, that she's been attending the meetings. Uh, I mean, that shows a lot of interest that you really want to be on the board, and I think that those people are going to notice that too. All right. Ready for the consent agenda? I think you have a, a card on one of the consent yes. agendas. Yeah, we do. Have. CA we? we have Lance Phillips that would like to have the opportunity Lance Phillips? Yes. Uh, yes, thank you uh, for the opportunity to speak on this uh, item, and uh, I'm here to discuss the... Three minutes. Uh, I'm sorry, you have three minutes. Oh, okay. Yes, yes uh, I'm here to discuss the possibility of removing the neurotoxin fluoride from the Tyler Municipal Drinking uh, Water Supply. And to make my point, I offer the following evidence. The FDA classifies fluoride as a drug, not a nutrient. Fluoride is the only chemical added to the water to treat the humans consuming it without any control on dosing and not treat the water itself. Therefore, all of you are guilty of felonies according to the Texas Occupational Code, Section 165, practicing medicine without a license. I have reported this body to the Texas Attorney General's Office for violating the Texas Open Meetings Act, keeping the word water off the agenda two weeks ago when you were talking about renovating an elevated tank. It's definitely deceptive, especially since I was in email contact with you all about the water-related topic before the agenda was ever posted, and that's Section 151, Certified Agenda. The two most common types of fluoride in our water are sodium fluoric, hydrofluoric acid and silofluoride. And they are waste byproducts from the wet scrubbing systems of the fertilizer industry and are classified as hazardous waste. There are 23 human studies and over 100 animal studies linking fluoride to brain damage. Uh, officials encouraging citizens to blindly follow CDC, FDA, and FDA, ADA guidance are not questioning the drugs that are being added to the water or negligent to the office since they have failed to keep abreast of the facts. Fluoride accumulates in the body. The highest doses of fluoride are going to bottle-fed babies. Even the American uh, Dental Association, the most ardent institutional proponent, has said that they advise formula should be made with low or no fluoride water. And as the scripture reads in Matthew 18, it would be better for them to have a large millstone tied around their neck and drowned in the depths of the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. I believe it is necessary for all elected officials who took an oath to the Constitution and the laws of the United States investigate facts of fluoridation before making uh, false claims. In fact, there are no benefits of fluoridation. Some of these alleged crimes are malfeasance of public office, misconduct of public office, conspiracy to administer a poisonous substance to cause harm and death, practicing medicine without a license, breach of human rights. So a $10 million bond claim will be filed against the liability insurance policies of each council person, city mayor, police chief, city attorney, city manager. Number one, if you don't quit practicing medicine without a license and take a media vote to quit mass medicating the drinking water with fluoride, if you don't end the deceptive practices and stop violating the Texas Open Meetings Act. Uh, number three, provide a public notification through press releases to your constituents in the city stating this newfound evidence that you've all learned today and that it can cause permanent damage and ask them to come forward with uh, anything that they believe has caused health problems. End all flawed PCR testing requirements for city employees. And in conclusion, we demand that you follow through with your oath of office, and this is your notice that you've been served. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Phillips, for your comments. All right. And for the record, this item relates to spray parks. Pardon me? This, pardon me, sir. This item relates to spray parks. The Do you want to give it? Yeah, those are to each individual. Okay. You can come back with me. All right. Uh, on the consent agenda, do I have a motion to approve it? I got one question on the consent agenda. Ed, on CA four, the uh, police vehicle that was wrecked. If that wreck was caused by uh, an individual, do we seek reimbursement? We do file a claim on the insurance related to as far as an accident that is caused by the other party. Yes, sir. 
Okay. And that money isn't taken because we're self-funded. That money isn't taken and put into our risk fund uh, for to pay for claims such as this. Okay. Thank you. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Um, motion by Westbrook, second by McGee. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. City Manager's report. Mayor and Council, thank y'all. Um, a few items of note, uh, one of which is on the airport and something that our airport director was very excited about. In response to a request for proposals for general aviation development at the Tyler Pounds Regional Airport, Ned Wall Properties, LLC, has presented plans to build a state-of-the-art hangar, hangar facilities on the airport uh, property. The proposal requests uh, the opportunity to lease approximately 81,000 square feet of land upon which they intend to build facilities for aircraft storage and associated activities. The lease will be for a period of 20 years with options for renewal uh, for the two additional five-year periods. The Airport Advisory Board with, uh, will review the detailed plans as progress continues, and this long-awaited project is brought closer to fruition for the Tyler Aviation community. So we're very excited about that as far as new addition that will be out there at Tyler Pounds Regional Airport. The second one relates to downtown uh, with uh, the tool design, and y'all approved a contract a couple meetings ago um, on tool design, and they'll be in Tyler from April 18th to the 22nd to facilitate the process for creating a downtown Tyler design plan. And so they, during this process, they'll be conducting and gathering feedback from multiple different stakeholder groups, including yourselves. Uh, and it'll be an opportunity for the public to submit their comments and suggestions uh, to tool design to take into account as well. Also downtown, our traffic operations is working on uh, replacing the overhead street sign names, uh, name signs uh, that were originally installed back in 2011. And so there's 15 intersections with a total of 50 signs that have the black and white signs as, to oppose, as opposed to the normal green and white signs that you find in other intersections throughout the city. Um, and so these were originally installed to create a unique setting that showcases kind of the city of Tyler that we, so we were founded in 1846. And so they're starting to show their age. So the sign shop is busy uh, restoring these and you'll see those as well as other work that they're doing on the downtown lights, uh, the traffic signal sign, mast, arm poles, uh, the skirting around that and pedestrian crosswalk uh, areas. And then finally, uh, just kind of a shout out to our fire department. Uh, the Texas Commission on Fire Protection recently conducted their annual inspection of our Tyler Fire Department, and they found no violations or issues with the operations or assets of the fire department. No notes of any kind uh, in regards to areas that needed correction or uh, concerns. And so we thank Chief Coble, the Assistant Chiefs Frost and Hooten, and all of our fire chiefs, and our firefighters and drivers, along with their office staff, for providing excellence for the citizens of Tyler. Back to you, Mike. Any comments for the city manager before we adjourn? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>